Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. This particular channel today, I want to connect with Freddie Mercury in the afterlife, a good friend of yours and mine. So I'm going to ask Freddie to come on in. All right. Oh, it's so good to see you. It's been so long. Not really, but it feels like it. So come on in and have a seat. Oh, such a dear. I feel like, like we're on a couch or something almost. I feel like you're right next to me. Can you move over here just a little bit with your energy so that I can actually look at you so I can kind of see the viewers? That'd be great. Again, Freddie is here to chat with us. This is a special time of year. It is June when I'm recording this and June is Pride Month. So happy Pride Month to all of my friends. And so I wanted to talk to you about that, Freddie. Let's talk about this whole concept of Pride Month. I mean, what do you think of that? Given the life that you you had, that you lived, and how different the times are now since like the 80s and the 90s, it's now 2019 when I'm recording this. It's so different. What do you think about this whole concept of Pride Month? He says, "Well, well, of course, I, I." He says, "I think it's, I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful, of course." But, and then he's smoking. People always ask me, "Why does he smoke? How do spirits smoke?" But, but you do. A lot of times when I see you, you always have a cigarette in your hand. And he says, yes, yes. And I, I try not to be rude. He says, I try to be polite because I know you're not a non-smoker. But uh, I, can't give you skin, or, uh, I can't give you lung cancer in, in the afterlife, <laughs> he says. And he's kind of pointing. And then he winks when he says lung cancer. He winks. We know what that's a reference to. All right. Um, he says, you know, it shouldn't have to be this way. It shouldn't have to be this way. There shouldn't have to be just a month where you celebrate the freedom of love and expression and who you are. He says it shouldn't have to be like that at all. There shouldn't have to be anything special or unique. But he says, I recognize that there's a lot that has to be done to help other people in the world, throughout the world, understand what they don't understand. And unfortunately, he says, unfortunately, there's a long way to go with that. That if you're not in a relationship where you love someone that is like you, that is the same gender, or have someone in your family, or your friend group, or your friend circle who has come out as either gay, bisexual, transgendered, um, non-gendered, etc. He says there's so many different, different variations of how to sort of describe what it is like to be a homosexual or a bisexual in society. And he says, um, he says, Bridget, I know you have a problem with this. Well, I, you know, well, and the truth is, Freddie, I, I mean, I do, but I feel like I don't really have necessarily a say. I don't need to stand on a soapbox because I myself have not dealt with um, bias or discrimination because of my gender identification like I'm a woman I was born a woman and I am heterosexual and so I'm in a relationship with uh, my husband I have a husband a man as my life partner but I'm very open about I understand gender fluidity and I understand that in spirit form gender is not there's no identification of gender there's actually an all-inclusiveness there's both male and female within all of us and in fact all of our genders all of our our gender is a term for the exterior of the body and the bio biology of the body, but yet the energy of a person has both masculine and feminine. And sometimes the masculine is dominant and sometimes the feminine is dominant, regardless of the physical body manifestation of gender. And so I understand that and I have a very strong um, perspective about that. And so, but I, but I also feel like the whole pride celebration stuff is wonderful because it's it kind of, but it also, I can understand that it can be criticized too, like Black History Month is in February and Pride Month is in June and Women's History Month is in, you know, that kind of thing. It's like there shouldn't have to be separate times of the year to celebrate diversity, unity, love. I mean, it should just be naturally woven in, into our society, but it's not. And so that part of it makes me feel kind of sad and 
yet at the same time, I also want to celebrate the progress that has been made, you know? So are there, I mean, so what would you do if you were here now and there is Pride Month, what would you do? He says, I'd have parties. I would have parties. He says, parties, we would have parties. Fabulous parties, he says. <laughs> and he says, in which I would hand out um, condoms and such so that everyone would be safe. That's what he says. And so, <laughs> like, okay, and then such, they would, we would have party favors and that would be party favors. He says, so that everyone would be safe and healthy because that's important. He says, and you don't have to be homosexual. You could be heterosexual or bisexual in order to be able to utilize that. He says, you need to, everyone needs to be healthy. That's the top priority is health. He says, healthy, healthy, healthy. All right. All right. So I have a question for you, Freddie. What do you think about this? Or how do you explain from a spirit perspective, not a human, but a spirit perspective, how do you explain like transgender? this whole identification with uh, male or female or, um, you know, people that have like go through um, change operations to change their anatomy and all that kind of stuff and hormone replacements and all that. How do you explain that from a spiritual perspective? Because I think that'd be interesting, especially for those who love Freddie Mercury in the afterlife. <laughs> well, how would you explain that? Can you help? Can you help explain that? He says, it's sort of like harmonies, really. It's trying to find the right balance, the right sequence of notes, the right instruments that come together to create just this perfect melody. And he says, everyone's song is different. Every song is unique. And the coming together of that or the, the recognition of that is extremely important to the success. So in these ways, the same would go for gender. So you could be a musician that specifically plays a certain style of music and yet incorporate a completely different, um, how are you, completely different genre? It's kind of like, <laughs> he says, it's kind of like being a rock and roll star and having to play in a purely focused polka band or a play in a bluegrass band and it's just not it's not your style you know like you're born into a rock and roll band mentality and then you have to play bluegrass but you really don't like that you don't resonate with that you don't it doesn't fit you or vice versa you're born as a rock and roll star and you have to adapt and adjust because you're only in a place that only plays bluegrass music. So if you're gonna wanna function at all as a musician, you have to play the bluegrass music and that's not your jam. So both, he says in both scenarios, it, it, you have to identify. He says you have to define, you have to self-define, self-declare. He says, so when you think of spirit, you think of frequency and energy and the power of what it is that you really truly believe, he says, that's when you are able to allow the music to flow out of you, allow yourself to be that rock and roll star, no matter what environment you're in, or to find a way to get access to the music that you want to play or the band. This is not making any sense. Let's try this again. He's trying to show me music, music instruments and melodies and how some bands are this way, some bands are that way and how you as a musician have to adapt to what is available for you to be part of or you have to move. You have to make a conscious effort to leave that environment and go someplace else. This is how he's trying to explain the concept of tr being transgender, being born in one human gender body and identifying with a different gender. That's what he's describing. Okay, so 
Well, that makes sense. That totally makes sense. All right. It's just hard. He's like, it's just hard to download it. Like for me, it's hard for me to get all this information and try to sort it through and say it just like that was perfect. He says, perfect, perfect, perfect. He says, sometimes less is more, Bridget. I'm like, oh, and you're the one, Freddie, that's telling me that? He says, not all the time, darling, not all the time. And, it's, and, and the advice does not apply to me. It does not apply to everyone. I'm like, I know. Oh, you're so sweet. Hmm. All right. Can you come real close and let everyone feel your energy? He says, yes, and he's bringing a cat. And he's, this time the cat is like a, a grayish kind of brown with little brown spots, like tan spots on it. He's putting it in front of the, the cat. He says, yes, animals go to the afterlife. Pets do go to the afterlife. Pets do transition. And yes, just like your loved ones greet you in the, on the other side, he says, when you leave your body and you're still attached to human identity. So you, of course, you do see, the first things that you see or experience are human forms, which is representative of your loved ones, he says. And so of course, pets are included in that. Of course, my cats are with me. Of course they are. Of course they are. And I want everyone to know that. You will be reunited with your dear pets and your family and your dear friends in the afterlife. That is the first thing that you will experience. So do not be worried about that in any way. You will not be alone. I am not alone, he says. Besides, Bridget is chatting with me all the time. I am really not, actually. He says, well, you and everyone else, there's others too that chat, that like to talk with me. So I keep quite busy. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you as a viewer for watching. I know you enjoy these chats with uh, Freddie Mercury. This was a channeling session with Freddie Mercury in the afterlife here at Above Life Channel. Remember the purpose here is to inspire your spirit, to fill you up with hope because this Oh, this is your life. This is your life. You are a gift. Now go live it. Just live. Thanks for watching.